Nights here and welcome back. And today I'd like to go over a couple things with you guys. Um, first thing I'd like to go over is how I check the salinity of my water before I put it into my tank, how I store that salt water, and how I mix that salt water. I would also like to go over what I do with my old salt water and how I store my ROVI water. Okay guys, this is the tool that I use to check the salinity level of my water before I put it into my tank. Now. There's a couple things you need to know about these tools. Um, first thing would be how to get them. Second thing would be how to uh, cal calibrate them. And third thing would be how to use them. All right, so the first thing would be you can get these at pretty much any pet store usually. Uh, sometimes they're not stocked well, but usually you can get them at a pet store for like 45 bucks, Or you can pay the shipping cost of like $6. And then I think I found this one on eBay for 22 bucks or something like that. Um, but what it's called is it's called a rough fractometer. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If not, um, you can just read it yourself. Okay, so the first thing that the kit comes with is a the tool itself, rough fractometer. Then you get a a little teardrop uh, dropper, and then you get a screwdriver. Now, what the screwdriver is for is for calibrating. If you take this little black button off here, there will be a little screw bit hole right there. Now, what you want to do is you want to take your RODI water, which is what I pre-filled this with, just to make it easier for the film, and you drop it just three drops right there, and then you flip your sight glass back over. I kind of tip it a little bit to get the water to come back up to the top to get all the air out of there. And what you want to do is you want to look through the eyepiece here into a light source and take your screwdriver and adjust that little tiny screw in there until the blue and the white line separate right at zero. And then your tool is now calibrated. So now what I want to do is I want to check the level of salinity level of the salt water I'm mixing right now for my tank. So what I want to do is I want to clean this up real good. Um, any kind of soft fabric to wipe away the water will work. Um, I usually just use my sleeve or a rag, microfiber rag. Um, basically nothing abrasive because you can put scratches in the glass. Sometimes I'll use the bottom side of my shirt. And there we go. Now it's ready to use again. Now, I'm going to go get some salt water, I'll be right back. Okay, we're back with some water out of the container that I'm mixing salt with water in, and I want to check the level of it right now. First thing you guys should know is that um, the research that I've done says that you want to keep your water level in between 34 ppt and 36 ppt. I try to maintain 35, um, it's kind of hard to do. Just remember that it's not a real drastic thing. I mean, if you drop low or you go high, um, a couple minor fixes over a couple days and you'll be fine. Your corals aren't gonna die right away and your fish aren't gonna freak out. It's just what you kinda wanna shoot for, so. Okay, now we're gonna set, test the salinity of the water that I've mixed up over in the off screen here. What I want to do is I'll just do the same method of three drops that I use to calibrate the tool. You flip this over and then you look into the eyepiece. Right now my salinity level is 15 ppt which is very low and that's okay. I'd rather have it low because I can always add salt and I can always add RODI water, but usually I keep my container pretty full of water so there's not much room for water. Now we'll clean the tool and I'll show you how I mix it. Now this is the salt that I prefer to use um, in my tank. Uh, there's really no right or wrong on what salt to use. Um, it's kind of like Ford versus Chevy if you think about it. They're both going to do the job. They're both going to have their problems and they're both going to have their benefits. Now, I prefer this because it mixes well. It doesn't um, leave a real nasty film, per se, in the tank. In the mixing container, you know, you want to leave it in there for a good day. 
uh, mixing. I think the minimum is a half hour, but you really want to leave it in there for a good day because it will build as some kind of, uh, I don't know if it's calcium film or what it is, on the outside of the container. And you really don't want that in your tank, um, but the water is very clear. Um, I have, not to disc Coral Life, but I have had you, I have used Coral Life before and it didn't mix real well, kind of got chunky after 24 hours even. And it would also leave the kind of like this uh, yellowish white film, it felt like, you know, kind of on the top side of my tank. It, I just didn't prefer it. Um, it's the same price as your Coral Life, and I feel it's better stuff. Um, now, there's all kinds of different strands of the Insta Ocean. I prefer the Reef Crystals, of course, because I have um, corals in my tank. Now, you can get this online for like 54 bucks free shipping, and it will treat up to 200 gallons. That's a lot of salt. Um, I believe at Petco it will cost you like close to 80 bucks for 160 gallons. So um, this is definitely the better route. Um, I get it on eBay. It usually gets in here, gets here within a week or so. Um, this is the salt I use. It comes with four bags of salt in the box. Um, sometimes they're damaged. It's just the risk you take with uh, ordering off the line. But what I'll do is I'll open one bag at a time. And then I've got a couple buckets that I'll split the salt up to kind of keep it airtight. I don't know if it really needs to be, but I just prefer to put it in buckets to keep it airtight. And then I'll add it to my salt as um, as I need. So. Okay, so what I have here is my um, mixing station for water for my tank. Now I have two 32 gallon trash cans with lids on them. I have my RODI unit right here. And what I use these trash cans for is one stores RODI water um, and then the other one will store my salt mix because you want to let it sit for 24 hours to completely dissolve all the salt before you introduce it to your tank. Now with reef crystals you want to mix your salt water um, uh, excuse me half a cup per gallon. Um, what I've always done is I will fill this container up to a certain level and you know I just go by this rib right here um, but you might just want to take a, a magic marker Mark where your water level is at, add salt to it slowly, check it periodically, and then remember how many cups or uh, scoops or whatever you're using you put in there. That way the next time you go to mix up salt water, you just bring your RODI water level up to that, you add that, and then you make your final adjustments with uh, just little bits of salt. So, Okay, so usually I use this container for my salt water storage, and then I use this container for my RODI. R-O-D-I fresh water. Um, that's not the case right now because I'm treating some rocks. Now I'm not sure if this is correct or not, um, but I like to use my old water out of the tank that you know that I um, when I do a, a water change and I treat my new rocks with it if they're not um, treated already. So that's what I'm doing in this tank right now. To treat a rock basically what you want to do is take salt water of course, um, put your rocks in there get some water movement. Um, I like to throw a couple charcoal bags in there just to kind of control the smell because you're going to get a lot of dead and waste um, built up off the rock. And then you want to keep it up to the temperature of the tank that you're introducing the rock to. Um, and I, I've had this one in there for a couple weeks. I like to go 30 days just to be safe. Um, you might not have to, but that's just what I do. And then this one here right now I've got um, real low salt levels like we uh, talked about earlier with the our um, refractometer and now I'm going to show you how I introduce salt to the water. So. Okay guys so this is how I'm mixing my salt water right now um, as you can see down in there I've got three of the real cheap power heads just to really push the water around to help dissolve a lot of that salt I've got a heater down there and then I've got an air stone basically what the air stone does is it adds oxygen to the water before I add it to the tank Probably not necessary, it's just an extra step that I like to do. And then this is my RODI water um, inlet tube, because right now I'm going to bring it up to the top of these ridges here. Um, and then I know how much salt to add. Um, as you're adding the salt, you just kind of want to add it slow, and then uh, let the power heads kind of push that salt around so you don't get big clumps in the bottom of your uh, storage container. And then you want to let it set for 24 hours. I think. Um, 30 minutes and you can check it um, but it's going to change <laughs> within a day so I like to just let it sit 
Um, I get it close, of course, um, by adding salt and then checking every half hour. And then I'll let it set for 24 hours before I finally um, decided I, I'm happy with it. So that's how I mix it. Okay, guys. So that's my mixing station setup. Um, you guys got to see the salt water, that, the salt that I prefer for my salt water. My two containers, which aren't that expensive, um, you can get them pretty cheap on sale a lot of times, and um, the mess <laughs> that I call my station mixing there. Um, I would like to really quick thank you guys for watching my videos, um, liking and subscribing. I really appreciate it. Um, if you have any advice at all, um, I know there's a lot of veteran reefers out there that maybe could tell me how I'm doing, what I'm doing wrong in my videos, or advice that I'm putting out there might not be correct. Just leave a comment and I will try to add it to my next video and explain where and why I was wrong. Thank you very much. Have a good day.